was two years ago. The day I witnessed my parents get taken from my home. Tied up, thrown into the trunk of a car, and taken to the outskirts of town. Where they were shot and killed. After being tortured within inches of their lives. I was at my best friend's house. I wasn't even there. And I watched every second of it, up until their last breath. And in that final moment, I saw through my parents' eyes, the killer. As the bullet took the last grips of life from them, I never saw the killer's face. But that wasn't the last time I saw him. Two weeks later, I was in my bed, staring at the ceiling, when suddenly my vision began to blur and instantly cut to darkness. But it wasn't completely dark. There, there was a small column of light a few feet in front of me. The light was coming from beneath the door. Then a shadow passed across the door and the light shut off with a click. It took a while from my eyesight, if it was mine, to adjust to the darkness. The door slowly gets closer to me as I walk towards it. A hand, not my own, reaches out to the doorknob and turns it slowly without making a sound. And there she was. She was laying down with her face to the wall. Just drifting into the clutches of sleep. Then I see it. In the other hand, the killer holds a drill, and he begins to creep up behind the girl, now at the edge of the bed. He stares at her for a moment, gently tucking her hair behind her ear. Then he suddenly turns her over with a violent pull, covering her mouth quickly before she could let out a scream. He raises the drill and plunges it down towards her face. In her last moments, I see the spinning point of a drill fill my vision. I wake up suddenly with a start, in a cold sweat, watching the fan spin. I didn't fall asleep that night. I stayed up, wondering if it had just been a bad dream, or that I was just tired and my mind was messing with me. No. No, this was all too real. The next morning, I went downstairs for breakfast. I poured myself a bowl of cereal and turned on the TV. The news was on. The last thing my parents were watching the night they were killed? The headline was murder. The girl stabbed to death with power drill. The man also reported that her eyes had been drilled out of her skull. I turned off the TV when they switched over to the murder. I... I, I couldn't move. I, I dropped my spoon. I had spilled cereal and milk all over the floor. I couldn't believe what i just heard. What I witnessed last night? Was it real? The next month I stayed at my friend's house. Because without parents, I didn't have a job or money to pay for food or the house. So I had to leave. But I didn't want to go to an orphanage, so I stayed at my friend's house. My friend's name was Lucas, and he always had a thing for collecting the bones of animals and creating these bizarre creatures with three heads and wings, or a ridiculous amount of arms or something. I never questioned his strange passion though, I just learned to accept it. And we were good friends, really good friends, but I didn't want to tell him about these Visions. I've been calling them visions for a while now, but I don't feel like that's the proper word to describe them. Lucas and I had gone outside for a walk one evening, and we went to one of those weird antique stores where they sell strange stuff, like animal bones and mummified body parts and other creepy stuff that makes your skin crawl. He was ready for his next big thing. He wanted to create a creature with a bunch of eyeballs on it that had a large barrel-like body with like eight legs. 
I was used to him doing some of these kinds of things, so I told him to have fun while I explored the store. I had a very unusual feeling in the store. Like I, I was being watched. But I just blew it off, seeing as there was a lot of creepy old antiques and stuff. The store seemed much larger inside than it did from the outside, which was also strange to me. I followed a long hallway with the eerie old paintings and photographs, and I entered into another room in the back. Strange, there was only one thing in the room. A mirror. Confused, I walked towards the mirror and I stared into it. I began to feel really strange. I felt as if I was staring from inside this mirror at myself. Instead of just looking at myself in the mirror. Then suddenly the silhouette of a man appeared behind me. I instantly recognised the outfit and statue of the man. It, it's the killer. I turn around suddenly and Lucas is standing there with his jar of pig eyes looking at me like I'm fucking crazy. What are you doing, silly? Oh. Uh, nothing, nothing. Well, let's get out of here. I'm so excited to get started on this thing. The next day, Lucas was upstairs in the attic working on his new creature. That's where he loves to work. And he keeps all his creations up there, so not to freak anyone out, I guess. Plus, his mother didn't really want people to think her son was a freak or something. <laughs> I was still lying in bed in the guest bedroom. I only got about two hours of sleep last night because I had another vision. Another vision of a murder. It was 4am on the clock in the bedroom of this young boy. He was fast asleep in bed. The first thing I saw was the rusty corkscrew in the man's hand as he stared at the clock. The clock had just struck four when he turned to the boy in his slumber. But this time, something was different about the vision. I could actually hear this man's breathing. He starts singing a lullaby to the sleeping boy as he walks over to his bed. The boy was laying on his stomach and the man went over and gave him a gentle pat on the head. What comes next is almost too gruesome for me to retell, but I'll tell you anyway. First the man gently taped the boy's mouth shut so they didn't wake the sleeping boy. And he cannot scream and wake the rest of the family. The man takes the corkscrew and violently begins stabbing the boy in the back and sides of his neck. He was easily stabbed over a hundred times before I saw the death through that young boy's eyes. The vision was blurred with tears, but he was staring at the face of the killer. Unfortunately, I couldn't get full detail on the man's face because it was so dark and blurred. I was quiet for the next few days. I told Lucas I was just depressed about my parents, which I still was, but still, I just, I couldn't shake this feeling. Two months passed, and Lucas was getting more and more suspicious about me. He was noticing a pattern. When he saw that there had been murders on television, he noticed that every time I was up all night, there seemed to be a murder on the news. He finally decided to confront me. Hey, you've been acting a little... Well, a lot weird these past couple of months. With all these all-nighters and the murders. Are... Wait, let me get this straight. Are, are you suggesting that I'm the one killing these people? Well, you do seem really jittery. And you've been that way for the past few months, and... Even more so on the nights of the killings. Well... It wasn't me, okay? I swear. I fucking swear. I don't have it in me to, to kill anyone. Especially in the horrible ways these people have been killed. Lucas looked at me, concerned, as I began to cry. And he embraced me, 
I put my arms around him tightly and said, I see them. I see them, Lucas. I've seen them all. The murders. Lucas stopped hugging me and looked at me with shock. What do you mean you saw them? Well, for the past few months since the death of my parents, I've been seeing the murders that the killer commits through his eyes. Oh, that's terrible. And, and that's not even the worst part. When the person dies and takes their final breath, I see! I see it through their eyes in that moment, and I see the killer, but I can never see his fucking face! Lucas hugged me again, holding me tightly and rubbing my back. Is there any way we can find out who this killer is? I... I don't know. The next night, Lucas decided and insisted on staying in the same room with me, just in case I witnessed another murder. I told him not to, and that I would be fine, but he wouldn't take no for an answer. I'll pull an all-nighter, and you try to get some sleep for once. I told him we didn't need to be doing this, but he just told me to shut up, and that he wanted to help. And, well, I had to accept it. So I closed my eyes, and I drifted off into sleep. I woke, and my eyes were opened slowly. But I wasn't in the room anymore. I wasn't even in Lucas's house. At least, not mentally. The room was all stone, cracked, wet, and dark. And there was an inconsistent dripping sound in the background as if something were dripping from multiple places. The sound echoed loud and everything was so intense. The room was lit only by a dangling, exposed light bulb that slowly swayed back and forth overhead. The man was sitting down on a leather hospital bed, cleaning off a knife on a cloth. I could see this because the man was looking straight into a dirty old mirror. He wore a mask, so I couldn't see who he was. The man began to speak, his voice muffled by the horrific-looking mask he wore. I know you've been watching me, and I know you have seen me before. He started tapping the knife in the palm of his hand. I know where you are staying at this moment. I see your friend watching you as you're seizing in your sleep while receiving this message. I will come in three days, and I will kill you and Lucas and his mother. I can feel myself sweating outside of this consciousness, the terror chilling me to the bone. This man knows who I am, and he's going to kill me in three days. The man was looking down, but looked back up again. Oh, and by the way, there is no use in running, because wherever you go, I will always find you. And I will always follow you wherever you go, because we are tied together by this. He showed me a birthmark that vaguely resembles an eyeball. And then it hits me. I have the same birthmark on my arm. He says one last thing. Behold, I see many things, but none more so than death. He takes off the mask, but my vision slowly fades back to the room before I can see the man's face. Lucas was standing over me. Are you okay? My only reply was, we have to leave. Today. After explaining the dream to Lucas and telling his mother about everything, that had gone on for the past several months. We packed the bare necessities and took a bus to the airport. We don't even know where a safe place is and we don't want to go to an island because that's basically a trap. We don't know where this killer lives. We only know that he was in our town the day he killed my parents and he's been in the area for a while because most of the killings were around here. I hadn't told them yet, but after the vision the previous night, I've been constantly hearing this man laughing at me, manically, telling me that I can't run and see flashes of sharp bloody knives and implements of torture every few minutes. He's preparing. We board the plane. We were flying to Pennsylvania. Don't ask me why. 
I think it was because it was cheap. And Lucas's mum didn't make a lot of money. Well, I assume that's why Lucas's hobby wasn't exactly playing Xbox or video games. The flight took almost six hours since we were coming from California on such a cheap ride. But it's not like we needed first class seats. The man's voice reverberated through my head, giving me a headache. I'm gonna catch you. I'm gonna kill you. Stab wounds, stab wounds. We all bleed out. I tried to shake his voice from my head, but I couldn't. So I tried to play some music to drown him out. By the time we got to Pennsylvania, and with the time it took for scanning in bags before and after the flight, it was already the second day. The noises coming from the other end were becoming more and more terrifying, and the deaths were becoming swifter and more numerous. I could tell he was getting closer, but how could that be possible? As the hours passed, a small chill began to slowly creep up my spine. The colder the chill, the closer he was. And the closer he was, the louder his voice running through my head became. I don't know how he was doing it, but he seemed to be coming so fast, I tried to go through what may be my last day having fun. Before I died. It was the night of the second day. Both Lucas and his mother were asleep in the hotel beds. I was sitting in the bathtub with the curtain closed, trying to maintain my sanity. I was shivering so badly, it almost felt as if I was in. It almost felt as if he was in the hotel. But I knew he wasn't. I could feel it. He was one or two towns over from me, Max. I couldn't get my mind to think straight. I wasn't sure if I should call the cops or try to defend myself when the killer came. I just. I didn't know. My options were few and the outcome was almost always certain no matter my decision. I had at least seven different murder visions that night, each with its own cute little message to me written in the blood of the innocent. I started to cry. I cried for hours, knowing that these would be my final moments. 11 o'clock. I was still sitting in the tub, shaking and rocking back and forth like a madman. Like a madwoman. The killer was really close now. Maybe a turn over. I was running out of time. Why couldn't I just sleep and die in my sleep when he comes and kills me? Why, why can't I just get him out of my head? The sound of the second hand on the clock in the bathroom grew even louder, and I was sweating so much that I was slipping in the bath. Suddenly the door opened, and I jumped in shock, only to find that it was Lucas. Hey, what are you doing in here? He was taking his midnight pee. I told him I couldn't sleep. Okay, well, I hope we can survive this. Maybe. I told him something I hadn't told anyone before, ever. Hey, um, Lucas, I... I haven't told anyone this before, but I've I've never had the chance to love someone. I never I never got to hold that special person in my arms and tell them that I loved them. And and I've never heard someone tell me that they loved me. Not even my parents. Lucas frowned. Tears forming in his eyes. I love you as my best friend. And you are someone I can never let go. I... I couldn't imagine my life without you. Do you really mean that? Yes. He then took a seat next to me in the tub, and we waited for our demise. 3am. I'm so fucking terrified right now. That I can't even move. Even blink. <laughs> Blinking feels like I've been lifting 10,000 pounds. 
The chill down my spine is almost painful and there's a piercing ringing in my ears. And then suddenly, silence. Not just normal silence, I mean this silence was so quiet that there was no background noise and not even the wind could hear, could be heard from outside. Then I hear a door slam on the first floor. I hear a quick stifled scream and the gushing of blood. He's just killed the receptionist. I'm able to hear very well what is going on near the killer at this point because of how close he is. Then I hear the footsteps ascending the stairs very slowly. As if he was taking care to place both feet on each step as he came up. But I could also hear the deep grinding sound of the metal blade of a knife along the wall as he moved up the stairs. Lucas had fallen asleep beside me. I didn't want to wake him up for this. Hopefully he'll die peacefully not knowing he was being attacked. The killer reached the second floor. I heard his breathing get heavy as he whispers, silent, chuckles into my head. At this point, the silence is so loud. Sitting in this dim lit bathroom with my best friend beside me waiting. Just fucking waiting to die. It's a horrible feeling. The clock ticks loudly in the background. He's halfway to the third floor now. I hear his footsteps echo through the stairwell up into the third floor hallway. He reaches the top step and stops. He quietly hums his little tune again into my head as he walks down the hall. I'm gonna catch you. I'm gonna kill you. Stab wounds, stab wounds. We all bleed out. He walks in front of the door to our room. I hear the handle turn and the door slowly creep open. He passes the bathroom. Look at his mom! I hear a struggle, then five stabs and gushing sounds, then silence. A few seconds later, seconds that seem like eternity, I hear the footsteps coming towards the bathroom. I hear the door handle turn, and at an uncomfortable volume, I hear the door creak with a hideous groan. I hold my breath as the shower curtain pulls back slowly. I pull my arms around Lucas and I begin to pray a short prayer, hoping that maybe it will help. But there he is! The killer! He looks disfigured beyond imagination. His skin was burned and torn all over. His mouth was warped into a crooked grin, as if someone just pulled it aside like rubber. And his eyes... His eyes were dark, but they stared piercingly into my soul. In his hand, he held the dullest, most rusty meat cleaver I've ever seen in my life. Fresh with the blood of the hotel worker and Lucas's mother, I could only assume. He killed Lucas first. I was too paralysed to say or do anything. He decapitated him right in front of me. At least, he never knew what was coming. But half of my vision witnessed from the killer's eyes and half from Lucas's. When he died, it wasn't fun. The killer turned to me and he taped my mouth and he taped my mouth and covered it up with a few things. So no matter my struggle, no one would hear me. The pain Oh my god, the pain It was more than could be described. He started by cutting my fingers and toes off. He even cut my ears off. And then he started cutting my shins in half in the centre of my forearms. The blood came out quickly and then sparts as it hit the ceiling with a splat. He cut me down till I was nothing but a torso with a head crying tears of blood. He then took the cleaver and stuck it under my chin and stabbed up into my skull, splitting it in two. How am I telling you this story, you ask? 
Well, this is the story of how I murdered myself. <laughs>